What if God sends your husband and he asks you how many boys you dated? How many boyfriends you had? Uh, five. What? Five? She's a Jezebel. She's been touched. Hey, what is up guys and welcome or welcome back to the channel and welcome to Real Talk Fridays and let me tell you, it's about to get real, okay? I mean, no holes barred. It's just some good old girl chat aimed at helping us as women embrace the confident, powerful, beautiful blessings that we are. <laughs> Because sis, you look good. You look blessed, okay? <laughs> but seriously, we need to believe that. We need to embody that as women and not apologize for it. Listen, we need to be accepting only what we're worth and an end of tax on it, okay? <laughs> and that goes across the board, whether you're a professional woman, a stay-at-home mom, if you're black, white, yellow, green, orange, like a Oompa Loompa. <laughs> but seriously, no matter what your tax bracket is, your religious background, your ethnicity, none of that matters. But the thing that does matter is that we need to value ourselves before we can expect anyone else to. And let's be honest, that can be really hard. That can be so hard. Culture, ethnicity, all that kind of stuff aside with religion it can be so difficult when you're on a self-love journey because being raised in a religious household or religion in general can have such a powerful effect on our relationships and our lives and that's what i want to get into the way religion and religious beliefs mold us as women and the effects that it can have on our relationships especially so if we're honest the majority of our moral and ethical views and beliefs stem from religion. I mean, it stems from some sort of religious background, no matter how loosely you currently believe in that specific religion. For example, you might grow up and you might be saying to yourself, I don't want a man that can't provide for his family. My grandfather, my daddy, they provide for my mama and my grandma. Where do you think that comes from? You want a provider man. That comes from religion. Or even the simple idea that drinking too much is bad or having sex with multiple partners before you're married, you know, the fact that it gives you that little bit of guilty feeling, that all stems from some sort of religious belief. Now, I understand that not everyone is religious, but trust and believe that even if you don't currently identify with a specific religion, your grandmama's mama's 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 mama that did believe pass down those ideologies to you and you're emulating them today, even if you know it or not. But the thing is with religion, it can be very subjective. And unfortunately, the person delivering the message can misconstrue the message. The message is subject to personal interpretation. You know that game where you whisper something in one person's ear and by the time it gets to the person at the end of the line, it's a whole completely different conversation. Yeah, this is that. <laughs> now, I want to talk specifically about Christianity because I am a Christian and I absolutely love God. But being a woman that's not just Christian, but you, but I grew up in a Christian household, grew up with um, parents that are pastors. And I kind of find that churches tend to preach struggle love. Now, not all of them. Don't shoot me but a lot of them do. And when our religious beliefs, in this case, Christianity, is responsible for molding our morals and values, our emotional response to things, then the ideologies that are taught or the ideologies that are passed down through, in my opinion, misinterpretation of the word of God, it can leave a bunch of scarred, broken, hurt people. And if you're honest with yourself, there is some Christian person that you know, some person, religious person that you know, that is suffering some type of religiously brought on hurt. I don't believe that those hurts and stuff are as a result of religion itself, but as a result of the people. And people are flawed. The message can just be pure, but then when personal emotions and humanness becomes attached to it, that's where the hurt and then the misunderstanding and the confusion and all of that 
can uh, happen and unfortunately that's molding us and the thing is that a lot of women that grow up in the church are taught whether directly or indirectly to endure struggle love now i'm talking strictly about the word of god being misconstrued and misinterpreted to make it seem like god is saying that women are somehow beneath men or women are somehow less than resulting in a lot of christian men having inflated egos about what it means to be the head of a household and women believing they should endure all types of nonsense just to have love or have a relationship have a man but honestly if you're unhappy is it really love though i don't think so and i know this problem exists in a lot of different religions and different cultures i have friends that are muslims hindus and th the rhetoric is basically the same but let me just say I personally don't believe that God requires us to negate self-respect in any way, shape, or form, okay? You do not need to be a quiet little doormat in order to receive love from a good man. Now, oftentimes I've seen how religion can mold a woman into self-sacrifice, sacrificing her own happiness just to either get or stay in a relationship, marriage, whatever it might be. Heck, I've seen women sacrifice just to stay in a regular old begler schmegler relationship, just boyfriend, girlfriend, and you're sacrificing yourself like, like what, you're the world's best martyr? And that's one of the reasons I strongly believe that women should date. Eh, don't shoot me. <laughs> in lots of religions, women actively dating can be like severely frowned upon. It's the, it's the whole rhetoric of you need to be a good virtuous woman. What if God sends your husband and he asks you how many boys you dated? How many boyfriends you had? Uh, five. What? Five? She's a Jezebel. She's unclean. She's been touched. Listen, quick public service announcement. Having dated multiple people does not mean you slept with them. And going out to a nice restaurant, eating some shrimp scampi, while you and an individual exchange conversation about your likes and dislikes is not a sin. I am an advocate for dating because the fact of the matter is you need to perfect the art of walking away while you're single. God forbid you enter a marriage, quote unquote, green, then come to find out you're not so Christian, Christian husband, pull the wool over your eye, and now what? You're in this thing, for better or for worse, till death do us part. No, perfect the art of walking away while you're single. And the thing is where this whole thing gets so difficult and messy, religion, Christianity, I know like all religion, almost every single religion, they teach dating with intentionality. Now, I completely agree with dating with intentionality, but the problem comes in where it's the understanding of what that really means. For me, dating with intentionality means start seriously getting to know someone when you are ready for a long-term commitment such as marriage. But most times dating with intentionality is presented as don't date someone unless you want to marry them. Now, make it make sense. How can I know that I want to marry you if I didn't get to know you? How am I going to get to know my husband? How do I know you're my husband? How, can, how am I getting to know my husband? I should get to know a gentleman, okay? Then realize, wow, he's pretty dope. And then realize, oh, I do want him to be my husband. I mean, hang out with you in different environments, different settings, get to understand how you react in different environments, quote unquote, dating you. Make it make sense. For example, I don't know if you guys watch this show, but there's this show called Married at First Sight. 
it's a lifetime TV show where like couples they submit their desires, wants, needs, stuff like that to these experts, matchmakers, psychologists, pastors, whatever, and they basically sift through the pile and find you your perfect match. You don't meet the person until you're at the altar, unveil and say I do. Now there's this couple, Chris and Paige, two African Americans, uh, pretty girl, nice figure, everything, the guy, he okay. <laughs> but um, the thing is, from the time they met, he was groaning in discomfort when he saw her. He told her friends she's she's the complete opposite of what he wants. He told her to her face like, oh, you're not really my type. Mind you, this is all after he slept with her. So you know that she's not what you want, but you still slept with her. Mind you, he's a minister, he's a man of God. Now this young woman, being so caught up with the idea that he's a man of God, she's willing to endure and tough it out, you know? Like, oh, I must go through this test. Like, God sent me this man of God, so I must endure this test of him insulting me, belittling me, not only to my face, but to my friend's face at our wedding. And he's constantly gaslighting her, making it seem like it's somehow her fault. Like, make it make sense. Like, what test is? Sorry, that is not man of God behavior. And for her to think that God would do her that dirty, <laughs> girl. But unfortunately, this has become a common theme among women who really hold on to their faith and beliefs. Let's just admit it, we tend to ignore red flags when the term man of God comes into play, or he's a good Christian boy, or he's a good Muslim boy, like whatever the religion, once he's identified as stern in his beliefs, we ignore red flags. Or in some cases, our religious beliefs have taught us not to dig deeper and just trust that if it's from God, then it must be good. But remember, even the devil can quote scripture. All that glitters is not gold and God gives discernment for a reason. Now, I believe the word of God and that being said, I do believe that we should not be engaging in sexual activity with other people other than our spouses. But I do believe we need to break free from the misinformation that forces us into the misguided acceptance of bad marriages and terrible relationships. That's why you need to perfect the art of walking away while you're single so you don't end up in a marriage with a man that you don't even want. The other thing that we tend to do too is to misconstrue faith. God encourages us to have faith, but sometimes we sit with faith, sit with this man that's beating us for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Maybe he's cheating, maybe he's just plain old disrespectful, and you're sitting there while you're dating, mind you, and having faith that he's gonna change, then you marry him, and guess what? Now you're a married punching bag. At least you got a ring for your troubles, right? The Bible says faith without works is dead. So now faithfully work your way out of that dead relationship, okay? We as women need to stop sacrificing our dignity, our happiness, ourselves in the name of religion and faith. But it's not our fault, it's not even religion's fault. It's just a toxic narrative that has been passed down from generation to generation. And unfortunately, the perpetuators of that narrative have manipulated scripture to fit their ideologies. Case in point, our grandmothers saying, oh, your granddaddy was a dog. He did this, he did that, da, 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 but I'm a good Christian woman, so I stay. And they say it with such pride as if enduring horrible mistreatment for years, 30, 40, 50, 60 years is some type of prize, some type of medal to be achieved, no. She should have perfected the art of walking away before marrying a dog. Let me tell you, I'm a human being and human beings do not copulate with dogs. No. So now, don't get me wrong. I love God. I love being a Christian. I wouldn't live my life any other way. The ideals and the foundation that 
my Christian faith has given me, has molded me into the woman that I am today. And I love her. I love what I represent. I love who I am. And we all should be at that place, you know? But the issue comes into play when personal opinions get mixed in with scripture or someone else's interpretation of the scripture becomes a chain around your neck. That is why it's so important to pray and read the word of God for yourself and trust God to open your mind and reveal his word to you, the true meaning of his word. Now this happens so often. That's why that's famous scripture about, um, women, wives should submit to their husbands are so many. Oh, it's often misunderstood and it's taught to me. Submission means you should do whatever your man says. You don't have an opinion. That's not what submission means, ma'am. You need to read the word of God for yourself. If you do, you'll realize that us as women, we're meant to be loved, to be treasured, to be seen as a priority, to be protected. Religion can mold us as women beautifully, as long as we're being truly molded by God and by our faith and not by someone else's opinion or someone else's interpretation. All right, guys, that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you'll never miss another one of my uploads. And if you enjoyed this Real Talk Friday, go ahead and drop in the description, not the description about child, the comment section, some other topics you would like me to discuss or if there's anything I mentioned in this video that you want more clarity on. All right, see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.